Several world leaders congratulated the new Prime Minister of Thailand after his election officially ended three months of political deadlock. Anissa de Guzman reports. Real estate tycoon and Pua Thai party candidate Shreta Tawisin received a lot of messages from world leaders who congratulated on his election as the 30th Prime Minister of Thailand. Among the well-wishers was Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is looking forward to take the India-Thailand bilateral relations to a higher level. Meanwhile, North Korean Premier Kim Tok hoon has sent a congratulatory letter, while His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister, and Ruler of Dubai also relayed his greetings. Other well wishers include Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Shen Long, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, as well as the European Union. Thai lawmakers elected 61-year-old real estate tycoon and developer Shreta Tawisin on Tuesday, August 22, following more than three months of political deadlock. Shreta garnered 482 votes out of the 375 threshold required to be prime minister. Cambodia has also selected its new prime minister by appointing 45-year-old four-star General Hun Manet, the son of outgoing Premier Hun Sen, to be its future leader. Shreta and Hun Manet vowed to work together and strengthen the bilateral relations of their respective countries during the course of their leadership. Dishananisa de Guzman, Rangan Chakuntep Mahanapon, SMN News, Protect Times. So what do in connection, industry leaders urged the new Prime Minister of Thailand to hasten the process of organizing his government to address pressing economic challenges waiting to be solved after months of political deadlock. Chatman Konpe Saimugoson has the details. Incoming Prime Minister Seta Tawisin faces attacks of revitalizing Thailand after months of political stalemate limited the government from achieving economic expansion. The business community urged the newly appointed leader to hasten the process of organizing a new government to promptly address a sequence of pressing challenges. These economic challenges include fragile exports, a looming drought crisis, managing high household debt, as well as giving assistance to struggling small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs. The chairman of the Federation of Thailand Industries, or FTI, expressed the need for Seta and his cabinet to begin work immediately to revitalize the national economy. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Thai National Shippers Council stressed the need for the new government to focus on solutions to weak exports, the looming drought crisis, and uneven economic conditions. Moreover, the president of the Thai Hotels Association believes it is better to establish a new government immediately to allow the industry to prepare for a stronger influx of tourists in the next three months. Several world leaders, on the other hand, conveyed their greetings to the incoming Prime Minister and expressed their willingness to expand bilateral ties under the new government of Thailand. Meanwhile, Australia expressed willingness to work more closely with the Philippines by increasing joint patrols in the South China Sea. Shina Salem reports. Australian Defence Minister Richard Marles said Canberra plans to increase bilateral activities in the South China Sea as part of security efforts. Morales made a statement on Friday as he observed military exercises with President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. More than 2,000 Australian and Philippine defense personnel are participating in joint military drills near the contested territory, which involve amphibious landing and air assault drills. Dubbed Exercise Alone 2023, the military drills kicked off in Darwin, Australia on August 14 and ends on August 31, with some of the activities held in the Philippine waters. Exercise Alone marked first-ever joint amphibious training between Australia and the Philippines. 
Meanwhile, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese will visit the Philippines from September 7 to 8, 2023, making him the first sitting Prime Minister to visit the Southeast Asian country in 20 years. Morrill said Canberra wants to elevate the relationship with the Philippines to a strategic partnership, along with plans to hold more formal talks in Australia in 2024. Reporting from New South Wales, this is Shina Salem, SMNI News, Australia. Fisher Fox and civic groups in South Korea have promised to defend the marine environment as well as their own rights and interests until the end against the treated radioactive wastewater discharge plan of Japan. Kim Sung has the details. Japan began releasing the nuke polluted water from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean on Thursday, despite international and local opposition. Meanwhile, Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, the plant's operator, insists that it plans to carry out the first round of discharge over 17 days to dump 7,800 tons of radioactive wastewater. Meanwhile, CCTV Plus reports say that at one of the major aquatic markets with around 5 500 stalls in Incheon, South Korea, some customers are busy stockpiling seafood products amid fears of the wastewater discharge. However, more people have adopted a cautious attitude and various seafood gift boxes in the said market, one of the best-selling products during the Mid-Autumn Festival, are not selling at all right now. The Mid-Autumn Festival originated from China and is celebrated by various countries including South Korea. The said festival falls on September 29th this year. Many fish vendors and merchants express their worries due to the discharge plan. Both the price and sales volume of abalone fell sharply long before Japan finalized the discharge date, leaving many loan operators unable to make ends meet, and now there is no hope of any recovery. In Wanda County, in province of South Jola, South Korea, where abalone production accounts for more than 70% of the nation's total, the number of abalone farmers filing for bankruptcy has surged and some operators are eager to sell their farms at half of the original price. Meanwhile, civic activists have gathered in front of the Japanese embassy in Seoul and the Japanese consulate general in Busan for two consecutive days and said their protests and demonstrations will only become more intense if Japan keeps processing the wastewater discharge plan. South Korea's National Federation of Fisheries Cooperatives is also working with Japanese peers to intervene in the ocean discharge while filing a lawsuit against TEPCO and seeking compensation from the government of Japan. Seoul is Kim Sang Imnida S. Seminai News, South Korea.